take the motherfucking game. Bring it back to the realness from which it came. Nice medallion. What up, though? It is that deep, y'all. It's your girl, DD Trey Red, a.k.a. the good auntie. Over here we got... The good guy, Juan. I was going to be somebody else this week, but... um. <laughs> Damn, I forgot who I wanted to be this time. So I guess I'm going to have to stick crisis. with the good guy. This identity crisis. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going through the whole lot of different things, you know. <laughs> so I'm trying to talk in my cool voice today. Gotcha. I wonder, is this picking up well? Well, as you can see, it's just the two of us. Hey, we can make it if we try. Just the two of us. Hey, <laughs> you, you and, and I. I. <laughs> Twin power. Twin power. All right, so how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, my weekend was very, very, very well. Um, you know, personally, it was very well. You yeah. know what I mean? I got to uh, experience a few new things, and mm-hmm. I actually, you know, got a nice vegan Thanksgiving meal, so I didn't have to eat the uh, typical tra- uh, traditional stuff, you Look know. You. Um, I was able to, you know, help some, uh, help some friends out over the weekend who was, you know, having issues, so mm-hmm. I was able to. Uh, do that as well, but I had a good time. I, I'm I, I'm really I'm really pleased with my uh, holiday weekend. That's even what's though, up. Even though I don't fuck with Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving. Okay, whatever. How about you? <laughs> so before I get into my weekend, okay. I was just telling you earlier how we're gonna we're gonna call this uh, episode 17. So instead of doing season one, season two, right. like you said, we're just right. gonna count the episodes. So this would be episode. 17. 17. One seven. One seven. You know what I'm saying we in the building. We here. So, um, <laughs> yeah, to me, it just made more sense. Uh, you know, when I just sat there and thought about it, like, you know what? Instead of having to type this, yeah, let's do, let's yeah. just count, let's just count them down. Yeah, just keep going. Then so we, we can, can have a party when we hit like 100. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we can have a party at 25. We can have a party at. Set, set, setting short term <laughs> goals when the weather folds. There you go. What, what, what did Jay say? Shit, I don't know. <laughs> 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 I know what song, but it's not it's not clicking. But anyways, my holiday weekend was great. I cooked. I cooked the whole shebang. Okay. And then what happened was my auntie cooked and my mom and my brother, and they cooked. So it was like okay. all this food. So I ended up with all this food left. Wow. So I uh, froze the dressing because dressing is my favorite. And I made okay. my dressing was so freaking good. I was so proud of myself. Everything I made was like on point. Right. So um, I ended up freezing some of that dressing because my mom made dressing too. And she's like the queen of dressing okay i didn't even try hers because i didn't want to be like hurt like dang it's still way better <laughs> but i froze some of mine so probably like next week i'll take some out and unthaw and have me a little little dressing now you now you know i don't know about this freezing now <laughs> they say you you got a time limit on the, on, on the holiday food now well if you freeze things it extends I, it i know i know but i don't even know when it's holiday food it might you it's might can't fr- as any food. Yeah, I don't know you might can't freeze it. Nah, uh, you can freeze it. I've done it before because <laughs> I, I always I always freeze my mom's dressing. Right, right. Because like it'll be like Monday from Thursday, and I'm yeah. like, mm, I still want to eat this. I probably shouldn't. <laughs> That's so, I should ask that on a poll. Like, how long can you eat Thanksgiving food? Uh, well, you know, I don't know if you've seen that video with Plies. He, he still eats it. No, he said oh. he kind of he kinda, <laughs> no he kind of broke it down. He said you cook it on Wednesday. Mm. You know. You you start eating on Thursday, mm. on Friday it's just getting good, on Saturday okay you're pushing it, on Sunday, mm. Uh, mm, it's like on Monday, um, it's like you you gotta go to the hospital, right? And then Tuesday, <laughs> <laughs> I'm paraphrasing, but like Tuesday or Wednesday. Now that just it, went too far. He said Tuesday and Wednesday, he said you're dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know what? I don't follow Plies on Instagram. I'm gonna have to follow him. I don't follow me either, but oh, you just you know, saw a TikTok or something. Yeah, just be popping up, you know. Okay, yeah, so yeah, a bit, a bit, yeah, a bit. <laughs> it's country. <I> guess. <laughs> People say I talk a little country too. You think I talk country? Nah, no, nah. Especially okay when you go outside of Michigan, do people think you talk country? Yeah, well, they say you have an accent. But when I go, when I was in New York, people be like, "Are you from North Carolina?" I'm like, uh, "No." Nah. <laughs> Damn, we don't talk um that country, do we? Out to I them, huh? They act like to me. Yeah, you know, New York is kind of so fast paced. I guess so. Right. I they, guess we. I guess we are the country. We the country, and they say we dress country too. 
Nah. What? Nah, nah. Compared to them, I can see why they would say it. Nah, I mean, come on. Nah, nah. I mean, don't get, get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I like fashion myself, right? Mm-hmm. And I consider myself like top three, you know what I mean? And the other two guys. Top, top three. Top three with the fashion, you know what I'm saying? Okay. In from, the world? From, I mean, from my generation okay. of people that I knew. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um the other two guys, you know, they happen to be from New York. So, okay. I, you know, I compare my, myself, like, to Fabulous and, you know, Cameron. We, like, all in the same. Oh, Lord. You know what I mean? We in the same kind of, uh, we from the same era. So, we in the same kind of group. You know what I mean? Those only two people that's fucking with me. I mean, come on. We know ain't nobody around here <laughs> fucking with me. You and your uh, mismatch Balenciaga. I, I got to do it. You, you know how that happened? How did that happen? You know, I was sitting there and I put, I had my, just threw the clothes on the bed, right? Mm-hmm. And I and I seen the, the the colors, the accent colors in the shirt. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed the one boot and I said, damn, I usually wear this boot with this. Mm-hmm. But I said, um, damn, this one, this one will go. And then I said, because I usually wear, ah. Lord have mercy. It was fucking magical. <laughs> it was fucking, it was one of those moments, like a almond, like it was like, ah. Wow. Wear both boots. Wear, Wear both. both colors. You're, you know, I always did that anyway, you know, mix my yeah. shoes up. But, man, it was that that moment. You know what's crazy? When I was much younger, I used to be that person. Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't I didn't care about nothing. So I would wear, like, mismatched shoes. Right. I would wear, you know, whatever kind of clothes or whatever. I'm still, like, kind of like that, but not to the same extent as I was. Like, right. In my in my heyday. Okay. So, anyways, the Thanksgiving food that was my uh, last meal as as being uh, with regular food, basically. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah. switched to uh, first. I was doing pescatarian, but I did have a little bite of that honey baked turkey. It was good. Too. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> it was so good, <laughs> but just a little bit because it. It kind of was like turning my stomach a little bit too because right. my body was like, mm 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 mm. So. Know. You know how I feel about that um that ham. Well, well you, said, hey, you said ham or turkey? Turkey. Oh, I my bad, man. I'm, I hate ham. I, I always hated ham yeah. even before. I hate that pig so much that I, I I just all I heard was pig, a pig's ass. I wanted. I'm. I'm. I was. Continue, please. <laughs> okay, so that was my last. That was my send off. Okay. Into uh, vegetarianism. Okay. And uh, veganism. Okay. I don't think I could be a hundred percent vegan because there's like certain yeah. things that's hard, like butter. Yeah, butter is very um, hard. Like certain recipes call for eggs. Like I'm not about to boil eggs or right. scramble eggs, but yeah. Like I made the banana nut bread the other day. Had right. to put an egg in it, just one. Well, you know they got um some substitutes now too. Like they I don't got like v- substitutes. V- vegan butter and you know. Mm-mm. different. No. You say you don't like it at all? No. See, I would do oil. Like, I could do coconut oil, mm-hmm. avocado. I could do the oils, but I don't like the substitute foods, like Beyond Burger. And, um, oh, yeah, like that's right. I tried that uh, Italian uh, vegan sausage. Okay. It was so mushy. I took it out. I'm like, why is it like mushy? Well, you, you can't cook. You know, you can't cook it the same, right? Well, no. <laughs> I, did you, did I you? cooked it. Okay. And it when I cooked it, it firmed up. Okay. And then I tasted it, and it wasn't like the worst thing ever. Right. But I'm like, why would I eat this? I'm not going right. to eat things that aren't good. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I never did that. Right. So I'm not going to do that with vegan shit either. Like, I would rather just increase my vegetables, right. eat the higher protein vegetables, um, than go buy some chickpea okay. mushed right. with, you know, spices trying to make it taste like sausage. Right, right. Like, I, no. I, yeah, yeah, I believe a lot of that um, Beyond Meat stuff, mm-hmm. it, you know, it's a lot of chemicals in that. So That's what I think. Right. It tastes like chemicals and right. plants. Right. And then um, a lot of it is full of soy, right. too. It definitely so soy. 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 Yeah. So I went with, um, when I was shopping, I was purposely looking for um, the ones with no soy. All right. And so what I had yesterday was soy free. Like I said, it wasn't terrible. It right. was not like the worst thing I had ever eaten. Yeah. But, you know, the vegans be lying. They be like, it tastes just like. No, it does not. Well, well you know, um, I, I like to, like I said not earlier, close. I like to um, mix mine up with the mushrooms because it, mm-hmm. it's diff- It's so many different types of mushrooms. Mm-hmm. That, so it, different mushrooms have different textures. Mm-hmm. 
So you got the lion's mane. You got uh, my favorite is the oy- uh, oyster mushrooms. Mm-hmm. So now I can make myself one like um, um, swarmers okay. with the oyster mushrooms, or I can make fried my my version of fried chicken with the oyster mushrooms. Mm. Then then um, at Whole Foods they have these um, lobster mushrooms. Okay. And it, it, it's it, it, they look they like reddish and they look kind of like see like lobster tails. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, when you cook it, it's it, the smell. It's like it it's like, actually smells like a lobster. Mm. <laughs> so I'll take your word for it. So you got to get on it, huh? <laughs> but it's fun, um, just even diving into it because I've been like coming up with my own recipes. Like I made the vegan tacos today. Vegan tacos slapped so. Hard, right, like right, right. I'm like, why wasn't I eating tacos like this before? Like Wait. before, I would eat tacos and nachos, right? And I would need to go to bed afterwards because I'm right. got I got meat on that thing. I got right. pinto beans. I got right. uh, sour cream, extra mm-hmm. cheese right. sauce, like so delicious. Yeah, yeah. But Lord, it puts you away. Right, that's your body, man. Your, your body shutting down. But then today I had the, it was just black beans, avocado, pico, and sriracha. And it was on a soft tortilla. So good. Right, right. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. I already know what time it is. Good. Yeah. Mm. So proud of myself. So I got enough for that tomorrow. So I don't have to try to figure something out for tomorrow. But then I got to come up with stuff for the weekend. Oh, yeah. I mean, you'll get real hungry now. Yeah. I've been, um. Um, eating the uh, uh, artichokes, mm-hmm. um, fried artichokes. I, I, I started like that. Um, then I got some from um, was that Jay Alexander? They have um, like a a, a charbroiled broil artichoke. Mm-hmm. That shit was lit. Sounds good, yeah. Jay Alexander's. Um, that that I'll miss like yeah. crab. Cake. Well, I'll still probably eat a little fish. Right. I was telling you I'm going to do like 20% pescatarian, like right. 40% vegetarian, 40% vegan. I, that's how I kind of broke it down. So mostly vegan and vegetarian, but a little pescatarian because, eh, I need right. something. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I first started, um, back when I first started, um, I wouldn't have seafood like once every two months or mm-hmm. three months, like just one time, mm-hmm. like some shrimp or some, some lobster. Mm-hmm. But... Um, Actually, the first time I tried it, I went a whole year without, you know, of course, no meat, but no seafood either. Mm-hmm. And um, I lost a, lost a lot of weight. Yeah. And I was in, 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 in really good shape. So, But then that following year, um, right after New Year's, mm-hmm. I started eating seafood again. Mm-hmm. Then I started to blow up and get bloated. And Were you eating, like, like a lot of fried seafood or just, like, buttery? I guess, stuff, I guess, I guess buttery, like, yeah. you know, lobster tails yeah. and, and shrimp. Yeah. And um, I did that, and I kind of blew up. And I never, even when I was like working out, I mm-hmm. went, couldn't lose no weight. So um, last, I was in Miami last year around this time, like December sixth, and I said, I mean, I'm done with the seafood. Yeah. So I stopped eating seafood. I was like 238 pounds at that time. Mm. So um, as soon as I stopped. It, it, the, the weight, motherfucker. No, <laughs> right, right, right. The, the weight, the weight just started falling back off. You know what yeah. I mean? So when I first stopped eating, um, you know, poultry and beef, right, and I just went to seafood, I was, like, really conscious to just eat, like, healthy salmon, and if it was shrimp, it was grilled, and, like, not doing too much with it. And I dropped, like, five pounds in, like, eight days. Right, right. I got on the scale, I was like, wow, I could feel it. Right. But what happened was my ass started eating fried fish. Yes. Catfish. Right. Uh, fried shrimp, right? You know what I'm saying. I started to make it unhealthy, and then I just gained it back. I like, mean, wow, really? Right? Because you know, even being a vegan, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't nece- necessarily mean healthy. No, yeah, you have to do it healthy. Yeah, you have to do it healthy because yeah, you get to eat. Um, because you got you got to count the calories. The calories can still be the same. Right, right, and, um, and you get to you know frying these different vegetables. No, yeah, yeah. see, I'm so, stay away from that. You got to make sure you get um at least try to get the the um the right oils Mm -hmm. so you can um you know so you don't pick up as many calories but you can still pound them calories on as well for sure that's why people uh, will always be like why is there so many fat vegans right right (laughs) right 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 right. you know they they still eating the high calories they just ain't eating no meat you know and also that's that's an excuse too because they want to um you know find any excuse not to (laughs) eat have a try to try to have a 
somewhat of a healthier lifestyle, you know what I mean, as mm-hmm. far as, you know, indulging in animals. Yeah. Because my whole biggest thing was um, when everybody would always say, when, when, when Big Mama would catch cancer mm-hmm. and pass away, and then everybody would say, well, Big Mama never smoked or never drank. Mm-hmm. So she still caught cancer. So what caused the cancer? That hog mold. That that that, that, that animal. Pig feet. That pig feet. <laughs> that all that all that soul food yeah. that we um uh, that we are, we've been taught is, is supposed to be um nourishment to the body and you know nobody wants to take accountability to what it does. Mm-hmm. See they so as soon as you um bring that up they always say well if you drink alcohol it does this if you smoke cigarettes it does this but at least we know. Yeah. That is doing that. Exactly. You know, don't, 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 don't um, have me thinking that I'm I'm doing something good for myself eating right. this shit and, yeah. it, and you're getting high blood pressure, you're getting heart disease, you're yeah. getting di- diabetes and all types of shit. Yeah. Here's the thing. You're never going to be vice free. Right. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, the awareness. So mm-hmm. I know I'm drinking. I know mm-hmm. I'm drinking. But if you eat macaroni and cheese or, you know, it, you'll be surprised the things that people think are healthy like them right. fucking salads from coney island like nigga oh, you got yeah. a salad with chicken <laughs> boiled eggs melted cheese right, extra right. ranch and iceberg lettuce right this shit ain't healthy you might as well have got a burger right no no nutrition no value. no nutritional value <laughs> you just whatsoever. ate, you just ate a, a chicken burger <laughs> with one tomato <laughs> one tomato <laughs> right right <laughs> so yeah some people got the wrong ideas but so earlier today, I saw that Charlemagne. I'm I'm drifted off. Charlemagne <laughs> the God, which you know, not not the biggest fan, but uh, he shouted us out today. Oh he, oh, he did. He shouted us out today. Yeah, he must. He must have never seen me talk. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you what he said. He said, "The older I get, the more I realize that everything really is that deep." Okay, it is that we deep. <laughs> we on the bed. We've been trying to tell y'all that for how many episodes? Hey, we, we've been talking like a month. <laughs> it is that deep it's, yeah. it's getting out there But he went on to say The people you confide in Trust, date, become friends with Where you work The opportunities you take What you watch What you eat And even what you consume It's very deep And shouldn't been t- be taken lightly Right no. Hello I'm sorry, go ahead No I'm going to say See, he can say Something that intelligent mm-hmm. He's, And I know he's intelligent Yeah So when um, some of these, inst- um, some of the stuff that happens in the world when he pretends to act like he doesn't know what's going on, mm-hmm. that's that's what bothers me because yeah. I already know his intelligent level, mm-hmm. his, his intelligence. Well, you know he's gonna he's paid to right. act like he's not aware of these things. Right, I don't like so, that, and he's paid quite well for it. Oh, no, definitely, you know, definitely. Unfortunately, I mean, that that dollar, right? You know, is a tempting motherfucker. How, how much? How much so. could they ever pay you to um, not tell the truth? I'm um, I can't really answer that. <laughs> I can't really answer. That. Pay me to not tell the truth. So I have a big thing with my integrity. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's important to me, right? You know, and um, so if I'm knowing it's a lie, right? You couldn't pay me to do it. I'm right. not gonna do it because right. I couldn't live with myself. I right. couldn't be satisfied. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But but I guess you know I don't know. It depends on the lie. So it depends on the lie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but shit. No, I think for the most part, I don't think that they could. And right, I think right. that, um, you know, that's something that I always think about doing this. Like if opportunities come up and they want me to be different right. than what I am, how, how would I handle that? And I think I'm going to handle it perfectly fine and that I will stick to being who I am because okay. that's that's what brought you here anyway. Right. So, you know, a lot of times people see you but they kinda wanna repackage it into something that, you know, right. they could sell, sell to sell, different but, markets right, or whatever right. and it's kinda like, nah. Yeah. I think that probably has been the hardest thing um throughout my whole mm-hmm. time, you know, in my life is w- w- once I get to a certain level or a certain point when it's time to become that other person you got to be to to get to the next level, mm-hmm. I just burn the shit down. Like, I, I don't I don't want to not I don't want to um, lose my morality right. based off what I feel is my morality. Right. To um, get more, I, I, I'd rather just go another route. Exactly. Yeah. That's the thing about like corporate America and all of that too, because in corporate America, in corporate America. 
the the biggest asset to a person in that sphere is likability. Right. Like I have seen people who barely work, they don't work hard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They're not really that good, right. but they're <laughs> so likable. So and like so them. they yeah. can just move up the ladder so quick because everybody likes them and they're not threatening. It's almost like you ever read The 48 Law- Laws of Power? I've, I've listened to an audio book. Right. So they kind of discuss that, how basically you, you always kind of package yourself as like the n- underdog. Right. So people aren't threatened by you, so nobody is going to... Nobody's going to be trying to knock you down because right. they already kind of see you down anyway. So right. they're kind of like, eh, whatever. And then next thing you know, you're their CEO. You know right, what I'm right. saying? Ne- so, ne- never outshine the master, right? Exactly. Right, right. So I feel like these people who have these like really likable personalities, right. I feel like they kind of master that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's kind of a, a – but me, like I'm going to always be authentic. So I'll right. be authentic. Even if it makes people not like me. You get what I'm saying? So like in a situation, if, you know, people are all talking about somebody and I know what they're saying not to be true, I'm going to be like, no, that's not true. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody looking at me like, I don't like her. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that's a Leo trait. She always got something to say. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah. So that like, I think I am likable for the most part. Right. But I don't think I'm as likable as the likable motherfuckers that, you know. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I know. Definitely. I, I totally agree about that. You know what I mean? And I think I can be kind of unlikable, too, So, because right. I'm kind of an asshole. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The asshole. Oh, you say, oh, you say, oh, yeah? No, I'm saying, oh, yeah, because I'm an <laughs> asshole myself. You know what I mean? So, you no, I'm saying. That, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, oh, I'm yeah. saying. No, I'm saying that's relatable. Big asshole. I'm saying that's that's relatable, relatable. Yeah. Because I'm an asshole myself. Okay. So, you know, I always look to, um, that's why it's important that I, I like working in circles and I like to um, be, be in, be, be in a team mm-hmm. where everybody has a, a certain suit mm-hmm. and um, don't you know, for, for us to progress. Mm-hmm. And because you have those people who, who, who aren't, who, who ain't as authentic mm-hmm. and who, who's not willing to make no, uh, make no waves with nobody. Mm-hmm. And, but they're likable mm-hmm. so they can get you in a room but sometimes exactly. you need to just get in the room, and then you can take the room. Right. See, if I get in the room, I, I can take it mm-hmm. because I already know what it takes to. Because mm-hmm. at, at a certain point, being just likable, mm-hmm. when a motherfucker coming in and and can um, show results, mm-hmm. you, you that that should go out the window. But the thing about the likable person is they're going to often be a leader of a team. So as long as they can get their team to create results, right? They, start, they, they got results. They start, they start, but I'm saying <laughs> so, they start off likable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying until a, a, a motherfucker really comes in there and and takes it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying I just haven't seen that yet. I, I've seen <laughs> I just it. I've seen, seen, I, seen it. I've seen it a few. It. I've seen it quite a few times. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. So we discussed uh, earlier this this topic we wanted to tackle, and what kind of inspired this topic? Before I even introduce it, is just like what I see on the internet every day between men and women. Okay, we are having such a difficult time in this day and age right. in dating. Oh yeah, and you know finding a partner. Right, and it's like I almost think. One thing I concluded is, is like, I think we talk too much. Like, I (laughs) think that people kind of come on the Internet and they'll say little nuanced things that kind of bother them. Okay. And then it just it starts to be like this nitpicking competition. You know what I'm saying? There's been times that I've even thought to do it, like how much it gets on my nerve that a person does this little thing. But it's like, ooh, I don't want to come off as that person. So I think like to a certain degree when you have social media and that's where we all kind of (laughs) meet and talk our shit or whatever, we kind of talk too much. And I think what happens is that people don't know what to do anymore because it's so we're so overstimulated with. Right. Us constantly talking and saying we don't like this, we like this, we want this, right. we don't want this. You know what I'm saying? And so you just kind of like don't really know where to turn. And so I don't know. That's just the theory I have. What you think? Well, you can um, you know, I always make something about myself, but <laughs> you can um, you can you can blame that on people like me, right? Yeah. And, w- and what I mean by that is when I first got on like Facebook, for instance, back in like 2007, 2008. It was like um, it, it was it was very quiet. 
right? Yeah. Nobody was vocal for real. Okay. Or loud or, or crazy. And I just, from from my area, from my scene, from my perspective, right? Yeah. So then I just came on the scene and I just would start blurting out some shit, like, and I was just going hard, hard, hard. And people would just always be like, oh, my God, he's so crazy. And it gained me a lot of popularity back then. Mm -hmm. um, but now, fast forward to today, nobody has a fucking filter no more. Now, everybody is um, shouting out here, bah, bah, going back and forth because uh, uh, people like me came in and made it safe. Mm -hmm. Because they saw like, oh, I can say some something and be okay with saying mm -hmm. something. So that's when all these different opinions and it went from the opinions to people just saying anything just to get a reaction out of you. Yeah. And then you have the explosion and the fact that you can monetize social media too. Right, so right. everybody wants to go viral. Yes. Viral yes. post ideation. That's uh season well, what was that episode? Ooh, That's I don't like know. The first one, right? No, it was in the it was uh, with the therapist. You remember? Oh, okay. Remember this uh, viral post ideation, TikTok itis, eight or nine, and, uh, podcaster syndrome. Right, right, right. It was like seven. Okay, seven. I think it was seven. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's that, so, yeah, that people dopamine. really want to go viral. So Yeah, that dopamine and then like you said, people start getting paid. Yeah. yeah. And it was crazy. My homeboy used to tell us used to say it all the time back in the day, like, make them videos. It's gonna be a big thing. Do this and do that. Yeah. And got lazy. Right. Yeah. But I, I love to see how people capitalize off of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what? What? So besides that, besides us talking a lot, so right. we know that's the thing. We talk too much. Like we're telling people everything gets on our nerves, and so people don't even know what to do. Like, right. what do I even say? Right. I don't want to get on the nerves. I don't want to get on his nerves. Right. So what? What else do you think contributes to the difficulty that men and women are having today? Especially, we're gonna say like over thirty five years old. Um, just the 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 upbringing, you know what I mean. Uh, this the, the the you know I always talk about this all the time. The society expectations, mm -hmm. you know, we we got a time limit on um, where we should be, you know, at, at a certain time in life, mm -hmm. which is all a myth, mm -hmm. and and they design it to keep us divided. So what what was happening is we are really think we're fighting with the opposite person but what we what we're actually doing is fighting with ourselves mm -hmm. within mm -hmm. because we're not actually satisfied um to the points where we feel like we should be mm -hmm. so now we got to find somebody to take it out on you know in my opinion like we that's why we keep going back and forth so it's your fault my it ain't my fault it's your fault it's nothing wrong with me something wrong with you but in order for you to see something wrong in somebody else, you have to be able to to internalize whatever that is within yourself. Mm. So that's what I, I that's what I think it is. I just think that. So we, you think it's like a lot of pot calling the kettle? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna say pot calling the kettle, overstimulation, right. pot calling the kettle. So nobody really wants to take accountability that they could be like really a fucked up person. Right. Or they th right. they had things within themselves that they could work on. Yeah, definitely. And so rather than dealing with them, they project them to others, right. onto others, and say, "This is what you do, you, 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 you." But really, it's like, what, what about what are you doing? Right. I used to call it um, self -ref reflection. Okay. Um, a woman I used to date, um, she was always say things that I was doing, mm -hmm. and she was doing, and it, and I would say, "What? This is actually what you do." Yeah. Yeah. But she would always tell me I was doing this. And I'm like. Huh? Like, I was be so fucking confused. Like, yeah. and then, you know, me being, being younger, I was just a little bit more immature in the mind. I would just actually be fighting and arguing, trying to figure out what in the fuck am I doing wrong? Right. <laughs> and it, it was all in all actuality. She was projecting. She was just projecting. She was projecting. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really hard to not project, honestly. Right. You know, it's become such a part of us um, as people. It's really hard to not project. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I see it like constantly every day um, with the sexes doing that. So we're going to say, what was the first one? We said overstimulation. Overstimulation. Okay. Projection. Projection. 
I call it, for some reason I call it self reflect. I don't know what the fuck where I came up with that word. All right, so I'm right. I'm writing these down. I'm writing a post. All right. right, we got so we're overstimulated. We talk too much. We complain right. too much. Complain too much. So that's already attracting. If you believe in the law of attraction, right? That's yes. already attracting fucked up shit to you because. Yeah. You, that's what you speak. That's what you are attracting because that's what you're putting out there. That's what you're focused on instead of yes. what you do want, what you don't want, what you don't like. And that's right. why we keep getting it. And we keep getting it because we're not putting enough other things because we you know we fall with negativity, um, presented with negativity every day. So mm-hmm. what's happening if we, we, we're putting, we're not putting enough. Um, good information into our subconscious mind. Yeah. And we, and we, 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 we never, we, we're not doing it anymore. Or maybe we never was because if a person doesn't know that this is actually happening, how could they put more information in it, more good information in their mind? Okay. So to me, something that I notice with a lot of men today right. that are perpetually single, right. I think a lot of men that stay single for too long. Yeah. I don't think they 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 have not adapted to a woman for real in years. They like have these little ninety day uh, it's peace- romances. It's peaceful, and I think that um, those type of men. But no, these are the men that are complaining though. They want somebody. That's that's an act. So the so let's pretend it's not an act because okay. they're complaining that they want somebody. Right. right. Okay. So I, I don't want to. Project that's an act that okay. could be how they really feel. I'm like they you, want to be with somebody. Okay, okay. All right. So they're saying that they want to be with somebody, but they haven't had a girlfriend in like two, five years. Right. But they keep dating. They're on all the dating sites, their own hands, yeah. their own BLK, their own plenty of fish. Right. You know, they're trying, but they can't get anything to click. To me, I just feel like being single for a long time for a man mm-hmm. and getting out of the the game of, of like even knowing how to adapt to a woman i just right. feel like they'd be a little slow you know uh-huh. even dealing with them is just kind of like they don't have any patience for it they nitpick you know i, I don't think it's no me they bitch a lot I don't, I don't think it's really no good good men that are really single that want to be in relationships. Mm. I think that they put they complain. It, they, hold they, they, on, I believe that. Hold That's on, a hell of a statement. You I'm, said you don't think there are any good men that are single that who want, want to be in a relationship, right? Definitely. I'm gonna say that one more time. He is saying that right. there aren't any good men, nope. good men, good men who are single, right, and want to be in a relationship. Okay, right. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> that can't that can't get in a, in a relationship that's been single for a long time. Uh-huh. Now, I mean, if you just go through a breakup mm-hmm. two or three months a year or something like that, that's one thing. But I'm talking about those five, four, five, ten years mm-hmm. single motherfuckers that want to be in relationships. At, at some point, they um, they're complaining, but it's it, it, I believe is a fake complaint mm-hmm. because. Um, they know that it, it it attracts the next woman because they know the women are looking. No, it doesn't attract women when they complain. No, what I'm saying is oh. what, what what I mean by complaining is, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I just want I want to be in a relationship. I just can't find the right one. Oh, you know, that type okay. of that that type of talk. Okay, I just so can't game. find the right one. Yeah, it, uh, game. Okay. It, I don't call it game because the shit weak. Game is it's when you game game. I mean, it can be your game can be weak as fuck, but it's yeah, game. Yeah, weak ass game then yeah. because uh, they say that. Because they know that it's women out there here that's looking for that, and that's what they want to hear. So they're only acting like they want somebody. Right. They're okay with right. this uh, coming and going of these different women because they're not trying to sustain a relationship. Is what you're saying? They're not trying to. I mean, they want to. They want to. They want to have those uh, ninety day um, Fling, flings, basically. And, and, and at the same time, it, they become those type of things are kind of peaceful in a sense, right? Because mm-hmm. Once you're single for a long time, you don't, you know, it's just, this is a hell of a thing being able to wake up and not have to answer to no fucking body or have to listen to nobody. You don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So people be feeling like, oh, you know, it's a loneliness and all that. You just, it's a freedom. Mm. You know, you can, you can date three or four women in in a week if you want to, Mm -hmm. if you got it like that. Mm -hmm. You can date three or four women a week and, and enjoy yourself and nobody can say anything to you. Why would you want to get into a relationship 
if you just absolutely didn't find a person who just provided mm -hmm. from a man's perspective, perspective, provided just straight peace. Right. So we had a conversation about that yesterday, too, about um, uh, one of the guys, I think it's Ace Metaphor or something like that. But he okay. had made a TikTok. Tonight's conversation card. You heard of that. You've no, heard of no. that. Haven't? You've heard of that. Everybody knows. Tonight's conversation cards where they sit okay. with the cards and they have relationship talk. Oh, wow. Post videos. Okay, no, I'm, I'm not hip. You are. You just, you haven't paid attention. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's no way you could be on the internet and not see it. It's literally everywhere. Wait. But um, he was saying that men who ask for peace in relationships are really the chaotic ones because you know, that's not something a man would have to ask for. I don't know about that. Mm-hmm. I mean, or, 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 let me rephrase that. Maybe they are the chaotic ones mm -hmm. because because we in the like chaotic. Like you were just saying, like they yeah. don't really even want a relationship. Right. So. But but I'm saying as far as men that said they want peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need peace if you if your if your whole world is chaotic. Mm -hmm. So you you do crave that. It's, mm -hmm. it's a craving. But I feel like to ask of that of a woman, what does that mean? Does that mean that she can never complain? Does that mean she can never have an issue? Because no. to me, the, I've only dated one man ever in my life who's asked for peace. Right. And that was the thing. Like he, his life was chaotic. Right. He didn't want to deal with anything outside of his chaotic life. Right. That was more chaotic. Mm -hmm. But it's like if I have a problem, if, if things are going on between us that I'm not happy about it, I should be able to voice Right. my emotional needs to you, you and it not be a problem and it not be me destroying your peace right. but an opportunity for us to you know create a foundation if we're going to have a relationship you need to kind of know right you need to know me right so so yeah. so, so what, 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 what what i mean by peace mm -hmm. is um being able to come home right mm -hmm. and not argue about Stuff that don't make any fucking sense. <laughs> like I see guys like uh, they 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 go home and it's a fucking argument mm -hmm. every single yeah. day about where you been. Like yeah. for, I mean, gone an hour. Where you been? What you doing? Mm -hmm. uh, oh, 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 I need oh, I need to Facetime you. They want to Facetime you. Got to they got to see you all fucking day long. You know what I mean? Oh, show me show me the passenger seat. You know where you at? Sometimes I got to put me on the phone like, hey, 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 I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Juan. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? What in the fuck is going on? Yeah. And and I, that's what I mean by, what we mean by peace. You come home, your your lady is, is happy to see you. Mm -hmm. She cooks for you. Mm -hmm. She makes sure you, you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. Now, if she has a, a issue, mm -hmm. she presents her issue, mm -hmm. but based on her nurturing nature, you 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 handle it. You take care of it. Mm -hmm. And in fact, you want to take care of them, mm -hmm. but not you don't want to get into the whole thing where it's always a problem. Yeah. Because when there's always a problem, no matter when I was younger, mm -hmm. um, a woman I was dating, she 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 um before she before she actually moved in with me, she always complained about moving in with me. And I was like, mm -hmm. um, well, you know, what? I don't really want you to move in with me because. No matter what I do, is is never enough. Right. And you know, gets my better judgment. I let her move in. Because you thought that would solve the problem. Yeah, I let her move. In. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you know, we we stayed together a few years, and it mm -hmm. was like, okay, it was cool and all that, but it's always starting to fight. Yeah. And then me being a little bit younger than her, it was like, damn, what the fuck am I arguing about? Mm. I, I fucking slap a wall, punch a wall. Like, God damn, what was? No, you ain't supposed to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, what, what I mean by peace is um, you want to have different spats. You know, you're going to have different issues every once in a while. If, if, you, if you're arguing every day, mm -hmm. y'all do, don't need to be together. Right. Yeah. Okay, I get that. All right. So we got a, we got a few good things going on here. So then the next thing that I wanted to discuss, and we're going to continue to add to this list because this list about to be so dope. Uh, <laughs> we're going to help a lot of people with this list. Right. Uh, <laughs> so the next thing I wanted to talk about is like getting involved in a relationship. So okay. I'll tell the story. I was um, at work talking to my coworker, and right. she at the time was studying uh, Buddhism. 
Okay. So she didn't want to become a Buddhist, but she was like kind of studying their ways. All right. You ever studied Buddhism at all? I have no idea what it. I mean, I know Nam of the term. Yeah, yeah, of the term. Turn, I was like, say, <laughs> yeah, back from that, but I, no, I don't know exactly Buddhism what it is. Buddhism is not a religion. They don't like you to call it a religion, but it's like a a, a school of thoughts. Okay. 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 And it's it's about decreasing your want. So it's not okay. a, a the school of thought that's going to appeal to a lot of people because we right. live in the land of want, want, wants. Right. Right. But with the, in Buddhism, it's like separate yourself, detach yourself, detachment. That's what Buddhism is about. Okay. So if you t- detach yourself from all these wants, then you can experience true happiness right. and being grateful for what you have. Yes. Because that's the thing. People aren't unhappy because of what they have. They're right. unhappy because of what they don't have. Right. I want more. I got to right. Three bedroom house. I want a six bedroom house. Right. Exactly. I got a Kia. I want a Mercedes. I, right. You know what I mean. Right. So people are are continuing. Are are wanting is really what leads to our misery a yes, lot of the time. Definitely. So okay. with Buddhism, it kind of teaches people how to kind of veer away from that. Right. And so the statement that she made to me was that um, attached to nothing, mm-hmm. connected to everything. Right. And I was just like. Oh. Uh, uh, it blew you away a That's little bit, so right? Simple, but man, because she was saying how like she was attached to yeah. her phone. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and how like she's trying to she was trying to lose her attachment to her phone. Yeah, and she was she would go like you know a couple days without even having it, like right. just a little flip phone where she couldn't scroll or she didn't right. have access to everything. So. That's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about in relationships, attachment versus connection, right. and. How do you differentiate the two? So if you were given that assignment, how do you d- differentiate an attachment in a relationship versus a connection? How would you differ- differentiate them? Well, before I answer that, yeah. shout out to J. Cole. That, he got a song called Love Yours. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I so, love that song. Oh, yeah, that, that, that song make you cry a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that song dope <laughs> as hell. You know, you're not going to yeah. appreciate what you got. No, you ain't going to be able to appreciate Anything until you love what you got already, you exactly. know what I'm saying? So that's that's real dope. Yeah. Um, with me, uh, attachments. I think attachments is um, just things from the past, right? Or you know, things that you that, that you are, can no longer can that can, you can no longer connect to, mm-hmm. right? So, like a person might have um, um, attachment to. Someone that passed away, mm-hmm. or they might have an attachment to an old relationship, mm-hmm. and it's no longer a connection because a connection has to be an active thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, I think that we 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 have to definitely lose all attachments, mm-hmm. and, and and just don't don't worry about don't worry about don't be afraid to lose anything, mm-hmm. money. Uh, People, because you lose everything in his life anyway. It's mm-hmm. going, it's going, it's all going away. Mm-hmm. And at least in this dimension, mm-hmm. we, we don't know what happens next. I mean, you know, we have ideas. People tell us what happens next. We we don't know. You know what I'm saying? I just like to. I, I'm really big on connections. Though. I like to be on the same frequency as a person, mm-hmm. and and I, I like to build from the present because a, a connection is what's going on right now. Mm-hmm. You know, how you feel? I like it. So I was trying to verbalize this to someone one night and because he couldn't understand. He like attachment connection is the same thing. And I'm like, no, it's not. I said, it doesn't even sound the same. Like doesn't right. attachment just sound like eh, yeah. Eh, yeah. like something pulling at you. Right. Where a connection is like this. Right. Right. Like, yeah. you know, like if you plug your if I plug my phone to the wall, it's connected to the wall. Right, right, right. If you attach, if I need one to attach it, I would yeah, like have to put some tape right. on it and stick it. You know yeah, what I mean? Right, and it right. doesn't really go, but I'm making it work. Right, right. <laughs> That's just how I feel. But the best way that I can describe it, the difference is that you can, you can attach yourself to things. Yes. I'm attached to my house. I'm attached right. to my car. I'm attached to my status in yes, life. Yes. You can't connect with those things. Right. So connection is is different and it's deeper. Like you said, it's like being on that same frequency. Right. And so the way I relate to this into a relationship and in, in the dating sphere is like right. I think when two people initially meet, mm-hmm. they're on a connection wave. Because right. the connection is we attracted to each other. Right. right. Enough. Yeah. To talk, go out, right. hang out, whatever. So you right. got a little connection going on. So now you want to build on that. And so 
I got a, I got a whole little chart, y'all. Oh, I got shit. a chart. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> so, so you know, red Listen. always come with the red always come with the notes and shit. Listen, you know what I'm saying? But what's crazy about this is this. I wrote this on 929 2020. Um, 2020? 2020. Okay. When I was going through like some problems in a relationship that I was having, I was just doing everything. This whole notebook is pretty much dedicated to that relationship. So we will never turn away from this page. This is the right. only page right, 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 <laughs> you'll right. be talking about. But, um, so yeah. So this was September 29th, 2020, when I was talking about this. So I said the, uh, the connection is the honeymoon phase. That's when you're building the connection. Right. When, when the person can do no wrong and y'all having all the fun. Yes. And y'all can talk about anything. And, you know, shit just seems so good. And you posting yeah. their feet on your Instagram story. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just little uh, feet. No little face, toes. no face, no face, no case. <laughs> you ain't posting hands. <laughs> Oh yeah, no you face, know, no case, right? Back of their head. Yeah, yeah. Some arms. Oh yeah. You oh, know, yeah, for you, sure. but you vibe and that connection is like, okay, mm -hmm. hey, all right. Yeah. So how do people break from the connection into attachment? Be I got an answer. I'm I'm going oh, okay, my chart. okay, 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 okay. <laughs> it's not the answer, but it's what I think. Okay. Okay. So what happens in these connections? Right. What what will usually determine if they're going to continue connection or, or move towards attachment? Right. Emotional needs. Somebody oh, in that wow. relationship will have some kind of emotional need. Okay. Right? Because before, they just kind of like kicking it, having fun. Right, right, right. Everything is right. going right because they're on the same wave. Yeah. But eventually, somebody goes off the wave a little bit and yes. they have a separate emotional need that is, you know, different right, right. than what everybody's used to. Right? So, that's what that's where we hear. So, it's... So, honeymoon, hold on. We're honeymoon down. phase, right? Emotional, emotional need, need, right? Okay. So then it's a drop down chart. I see. I see. You got a pyramid going I on there. Pyramid. Yeah, it might be a little <laughs> bit Illuminati ish. <laughs> right. So you got emotional needs. So if the emotional need is unmet, okay, you start to get into a disconnection. Discon okay. Okay. If the emotional need is met, though, you further the connection, the connection. right? Okay. So now you're going good, right? So yeah. if you meet the emotional need of this person that you're with, right. that's important in that very beginning. Yes. Because have you realized, if you think of most of your relationships, mm -hmm. most of the, the what you end up breaking up over is usually something that happened real early on. That y'all never really squashed. Right. Like y'all had a little beef about something and y'all ain't That's really y'all ain't really get through it right. Yeah, yeah. But you just say, okay, you just try to avoid it. Right. You know, as best as you could and, mm -hmm. and further this relationship. And that's when you started to go into attachment because right. Because you feel for this person and yeah. you want to work it out, you just try to say forget about it and keep going. Right, right. But you can't say forget about it and keep going because right. it means something to you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. So if you're involved in a relationship with somebody, it doesn't have to mean anything to them per se, but they right. should. it should be addressed. Yeah, they should know about it. I used to work with this doctor and he, would, he had these great sayings. And one day he okay. said to me, sometimes when you see a bug, you just got to squish it. <laughs> okay. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, you I, ever been chilling and you just seen a bug and you were just kind of yeah, lazy yeah. and then you looked up and you couldn't find it? Right, right. Still in your house. Ah. That's how these things kind of go down in these relationships, that's right? A, that's a dope metaphor right there. I like that. All right. So we got the emotional needs. So okay. if you meet them, you go on to further the connection. Right. Right? And the relationship continues to blossom. It's fulfilling in a fulfilling way, right? Right. right. You, you get some security going. So okay. you have a, a honeymoon phase, an emotional need presents itself. You guys meet the emotional need. This is a dope fucking chart. <laughs> you further the connection. That furthering of the connection right. gets you some security. Okay. You get some security. Now you got some transparency. The relationship continues to blossom. It's right. fulfilling. You know. Right. That's, pa okay. Pa 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 pause it right there, right? All right. So... After you fulfill the connection, you get the security, security yeah. and, the, and, the, and the relationship blossoms. Yeah. But then on the other side of the chart, we got disconnect. Oh, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm in my bad. I didn't mean to cut you off. I didn't mean to cut you off. Okay. 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 So this is this is what we want to happen, right? Right. The right. Emotional need presents itself. You meet the need. Right. Right. You meet it completely. Yes. Okay. It furthers your connection with that person. Yeah. 
You get some security about yourselves. Okay. And the relationship continues to blossom in a fulfilling way. Right. Yay. Yeah. Hey, that's round of applause. That's what we want, right? But that's we, not that's what, what happens. That, that's what we love. <laughs> that, that's, what we, that's what we think is going to happen. So what usually happens is it's emotional need. Right. It's unmet. Okay. The relationship starts to disconnect, right? We're okay. still together, but right. shit ain't the same. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's just a little different. So uh, what is a, what is the definition of a emotional need? Emotional need could be, let's just say, okay, I'm going to give an example of something yeah. that I had going on before uh, this guy I was dating. Mm-hmm. I remember I started to notice that this girl, every time I commented on a status of his, right. she commented right after Oh, Every right, time. Right. It like never failed. Right. And it started to bother me a little bit. And obviously yeah. this isn't his problem. Right, right. But I came to him and I pointed out, like, have you noticed every time I comment, she comment right after me? Right, right. And I had already known that they had a little thing before. Okay. So it just started to feel like, why is she, like, it could be weeks later, because I started to play with it. I would go to something that was old, comment, right. and here she would come right after and comment. Right, and right, right. Like, <laughs> so I pointed out to him and he's like, wow, yeah. You want me to delete her? I'm like, no. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But had he handled it differently, right? Right. So he met my emotional need, right? Right. Because the first thing he did was secure me. Right. He didn't make me feel crazy. He didn't tell me right. I was stupid and there's nothing he could do about that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He immediately went into action like, oh, you want me to delete her? Because yeah. like, I delete her. And I'm like, no, nah, it's not that serious. And then it was over with. So that's an example of emotional. Okay, okay. I'm feeling a way about something. Right. I come to you about it. We fix it. Okay. In a way that, and so, now I would have been wrong if I'm like, yeah, delete that bitch. Because what would have happened? I would start having him delete everybody. Right, right, yeah. So once, I, had, once you started, I had to yeah. check it too. So once he showed me that he prioritized how I feel, yeah. then I'm like, okay, I'm not going to make it. It may, it may, it may, may relax a little more, right? Exactly. Make you feel, yeah. Right. So that's an example of Okay, of okay, that makes sense. Right. So if it doesn't get met, though, you get disconnection, right? And you're kind of arguing about this little thing a lot now. It's kind of yeah. always coming back. So then. So, so with the disconnection, uh-huh. is that where um, a, 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 in relationships you think a lot of arguments um, continue yes. to happen over and over and exactly. over again? Okay, okay. Because the next step is insecurity develops. Boom. Boom. So instead of security with the met needs right. and the good communication, you have yeah. insecurity. Right, right. I should write this. It's going to be a book or some shit. No, nah, this is dope. <laughs> right here. I want to I wanna write this up. All right. So we, we went from emotional needs, didn't get met. We get disconnection, arguments, bullshit. Right. Now it's insecurity. Because right. when you start arguing a relationship and you know shit ain't what it was before, your relationship has a weakness. Right. So you thinking other girls going to come in, other mm. men going to come in. Like right. you you got a weakness now. So yeah. you don't feel as great about it. Okay. But you fight through it, right? Because now you got what? An attachment. Ah, uh, right, right. I love them. Yeah. I'm going to just keep going through it. Right, we'll right. work it out somehow, you know? Yeah. So then communication breakdown. Okay. You, you can't communicate no more. Everything is an argument. You're walking on eggshells. That's then, what it is, a communication breakdown. Yes. Okay, okay. And then last, an attachment forms. So you're staying because an emotional need uh, through relationship is not fulfilled and you're staying trying to get it fulfilled so you're, you're going through all you're going through that whole battle mm-hmm. trying, you're trying to you're trying, trying to get that person to see you now because when somebody right. doesn't feel fulfill that need yeah. it's kind of like being invisible to them right right and so you spend that whole relationship trying to get them to see you just right. see me just see me and you argue and you fight and you try so hard and it's this horrible attachment situation and it's just all right so that's my theory of this, attachment versus connection <laughs> this is this has been very educational for me god dog this is this is really good dog this is really really this makes a lot of um sense sense to me when i when i li- look at people that i know yeah argue a lot it, it, it was it was just something that wasn't met at a certain point yeah and and now that person is still trying to fight to to get that fulfillment that they never got in the fucking beginning. God damn. God damn. G-O-T. God damn. What the fuck? 
<laughs> that was deep as fuck right there. This is what happens when you're going through relationship hell. Wow. <laughs> you start writing books and shit. Yeah. Trying to figure out, you know, like, how can I make this better? And it's like, man, it takes a lot. I think it would take a lot to, because it, people aren't usually, they don't usually have the humility to be like, okay, I was wrong and right. I could have handled that better. And then so much resentment can build up yeah. in this space. And it's just like love and resentment and all this bullshit in a pot. But then you know? I think too that attachments it, it stems further too. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times when you when you, when you, when people meet, mm -hmm. they're so used to what they always were were attached to in the, before. Mm -hmm. So what happens is when they don't, even though they left that situation, when they don't receive that same treatment. Mm -hmm. Then they also think something is wrong. Yeah, and that's a person who has probably emotional needs that are impossible to meet because there are right. those people too. Right. You know, it's a, it's a lot of um, people that I think suffer from that. Mm -hmm. They have needs that are impossible to meet. Yes. Yeah. So because it, it stems from something probably deeper, it might come deeper. from their parents or right. you know the first heartbreak they ever had. It right. just is is so rooted in them. Right. They trying to. You know, figure something out. That's what this is. Um, I was telling you the other day, like what I enjoyed about therapy so much right. was that um, what I think about therapists is they don't really tell you what to do. They tell you what you are doing. Right. And then that helps you set, you know, sort it out like, oh, yeah, because a lot of times you're doing things repetitiously right. and you don't even notice it. Yes, it's just yeah. become a part of who you are. Right. And how you navigate through life mm -hmm. comfortably, even though it's dysfunctional. I call it normalized dysfunctional bullshit. NBE. Right, right. NDB. Right. Normalized dysfunctional bullshit. Like a lot of us have that going on in our lives. Like it's it's yeah. so normalized, yeah. but it's dysfunctional bullshit. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, there are those people who you cannot meet their emotional needs. Right. You know what this? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, but, no. I was gonna say uh, I had a buddy of mine who um, he was dating. Uh, you know, he started dating a girl that he always wanted to date, and he actually got a chance to date her. You know, he's so attracted to her, mm -hmm. and then it, the dating scene been so short, and he's already like, "What the fuck did I get myself into?" Uh -oh. <laughs> like, in in in. I think that, you know, they're already going back and forth. It's only been like less than a month and they're already going back and forth. And it's like, I, and I, when I try to explain to him, like, man, listen, cut, cut, cut it short, bro. Mm -hmm. Because the longer you prolong it, the more issues that you're going to have with it. Mm -hmm. So just, just go ahead and just cut it now because. Mm -hmm. But he's probably attached because he loved the way she looked. Oh, he, he loved. loves the. This people is, can't be atti attached to the wrong shit. Like you can't be connected to the way somebody look, but uh -huh. you can be attached to how they look and how you look with them. Yes, that kind of shit. That's motherfucker said. Man, she's just so fucking fine. I'm like, <laughs> right. I get that, but he he doesn't realize that he has fine women around him all the time. You know what I mean? But I guess this particular she, she look. She that one from back in the day. You know, right, right. Always had wanted her. Right, 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 <laughs> wanted. right. Wanted. Yeah, wanted. W O N apostrophe T. Yes, yes, wanted yes. <laughs> and I tell him it's like it's, it's it's it can get so shallow, you know what I mean, for you to be um just stuck just solely off that. Mm -hmm. Like me personally, even if I was just on a dating scene like mm -hmm. that, it, it it has to be something else that attracts me in. Then the the looks is like that's the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It has to be something else. Yeah, I feel like the looks. I feel like the external should always be the icing on the cake, mm -hmm. and the connection you have with that person should be the the damn right cake. <laughs> you no, know for, for sure, because for sure. No, I mean, what's the point of being with somebody? Um, because they look a certain way, but you can't have a conversation exactly. with them. Exactly. You know, you can't you can't they even get on talk your to fucking them. Fucking nerves. Yeah. So that that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. So 
He going through it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I be teasing the shit out of him. Give me that one that you always wanted. Right, Tell right. Me. That's a, it's a reason why you ain't get him. Don't be trying to fight for something that keeps fleeing you. Oh yeah, you, you, def <laughs> you definitely gotta understand how this how this universe yeah. works. Mm -hmm. You know how the universe works. I mean, you you it tries to protect you from different things, and you just be so persistent mm -hmm. to get what you want. Yeah, and then boom. It's like that picture. It's like white Jesus right. and uh, the girl is clinging to a little bitty bear. Yeah. And Jesus is saying, give it to me. And she won't. But behind his hand is a way a bigger, bigger bear. better one. Right. That's a lot of people in this life because they got them damn attachments. So another thing I thought about this with, too, was uh, like when people say the term happy wife, happy life and how inciting that is for people. How does that make you feel when you f hear the term happy wife, happy life? Fuck that bullshit. <laughs> I mean, in a relationship, we both gonna be happy. You ain't gonna be no fucking happiness at all. So, But why do you not hear where it says happy life? It doesn't say happy wife and that's it. It says right. happy wife, happy life. So you'll be happy too. <sighs> no. Not that term... You know. Because um, and typically in those situations, mm -hmm. happy wife, happy life, the man is always um, doing everything to please the wife. But mm -hmm. if the wife is not reciprocating the energy, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a huge fucking problem. But so no, it, that's either, not so where it's going to be happy it, husband, no. husband, or I'm going to fuck your cousin. No, that's, that's <laughs> you know what I mean. If the if the, if the energy if the energy if the energy is not re uh, reciprocated. So, but that's the thing. That's what y'all don't be getting about what it's saying. It's saying like happy life, happy wife, happy life. Because what it's saying is that if the wife is happy, she does reciprocate happiness yes. back into the home. Absolutely. And the way that a woman is able to do that, though, is yeah. if she is even able to be happy. Right. So some she has to so be happy. This is, be, yeah. Right. This right. one. This is why I'm saying is she able to be happy? It's not that you made her happy. It's that she can be happy. Period. So a lot of times. Again, a man get with that woman that can't even be happy. She not happy with her hair. She not happy with her job. She right. not happy. She's never happy about anything. You cannot make this kind of woman happy. So what I'm saying is when you hear that term, happy wife, happy life, like don't think of it in terms of like you got to make her happy. Right. Think of it in terms as prioritize being with a woman who shows you that she can actually be happy. Because yeah. if she can't be happy on her own or with the things that you're able to do for her included in that, right. then your ha your life will be miserable because she can't be happy. Yeah, because because again, happiness is it comes from from within. Absolutely. So you you can't make a person happy. No, that person has to be happy. So this is how love works to me. Mm -hmm. This person is already happy and, and good with themselves. This person is already happy and good with themselves, mm -hmm. and they bring these happiness happiness together, mm -hmm. and then it creates love. And they create abundance. Abundance. So it shouldn't be about me filling your cup. Right. That's what a lot of people are looking for. They're looking for somebody to fill their cup. And that's yeah. why a lot of people end up with narcissists because truth be told, like a narcissist, that's they, what they specialize in. Yeah. A narcissist specializes in being able to look at you and say, I know what to give them. Yeah, right, right, them. right. And so they fill your cup. Yeah. And they fill your cup. You're attached to them because you need them yes. to keep your cup yes. full. But what do they do after that? They'll never fill it again. Right. And now you cling in for dear life trying to get them to be who you thought they were, who they never were. Right. Because you right. came into a relationship with an empty ass fucking cup. Right. I, so it's about abundance, not about filling cups. You I, might have I, to I, fill it a little bit sometimes. You might get down. I might right. have to come through. Right. I might get down. You might have to come through. But right. that that shouldn't be the all the time. Oh yeah, exactly. I've I've been around um, narcissists, you know, in my lifetime, yeah. right? And it, you know, I have like had homeboys that were narcissists. Mm -hmm. I had females that were narcissists, and it, it's like w w the more you turn away from them, mm -hmm. the harder they go to, to to bring you back in. Yeah, and then when they bring you back in. They back on the fuck shit. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's what they specialize in knowing. They know they want to know. They they specialize in figuring out exactly what you need. Sometimes right. they they can get to a person and see that they can't and they'll back off of that person. Right. Because it's like, damn, I can't ain't nothing penetrating. You become that person becomes the enemy, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So. I've I actually experienced that in, in business. You know what I'm saying? Friendship. Motherfuckers get mad as a motherfucker when you just yep. 
just totally separate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when they can't do nothing for you, basically. Right. Or everything is about reciprocity. Mm-hmm. Right. So they can't handle that. Yeah. Because they're fucked up. <laughs> so, so you had um you, you dealt with a narcissist before? Do you, do you think, think so you have? have? I'm pretty sure I have. Right, yeah. right. I think um yeah, at one point, so what led me to therapist was I needed, I wanted to make sure I wasn't the narcissist. Okay. <laughs> right, right. And like my therapist was like, yeah, you're definitely not a narcissist just for the simple fact that you you're worried here. about being You came here. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Not even that I came because therapists, will, I mean, narcissists will go to therapy, but narcissists don't typically go to therapy to find out that they're a narcissist. Okay. They go to therapy to find out that everything, everybody else is fucked up and it's, right, right. Know, it's not them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, you, and you can't tell them no different. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that was, that was initially my reason because I um, briefly studied narcissism, right? Okay. I had just got into the study because of somebody I was dealing with, but then it was just kind of like, I felt like I kept dealing with them. <laughs> right. Like, and so, you know, one I was dating was kind of like, well, one of the signs of being a narcissist is thinking everybody's a narcissist. And I'm like. That's true. That, that's true, though. Oh. And so then I was like reading up and I'm like, wait, do I do these things too? And I think um, what we fail to realize about narcissism is we all have some narcissistic traits. Right, right, right. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's true. Like, you yeah. know, thinking you the shit is narcissistic. Right. You know. Yeah. Um. So we all have some narcissistic traits, but that doesn't mean that you're you have narcissistic personality disorder. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So like, that I, that takes it a little bit deeper. So yeah, I was concerned. Like, am I a narcissist? You know, so. I, I have all the traits. <laughs> <laughs> I already know I have all the traits, but the fact that I could um, apologize to people, and the yeah. fact that I can admit to being wrong, and the fact that I could even have any concern mm-hmm. that. I I can say I have the traits. Mm-hmm. I I already know you know that that excludes me out because I care too much about other people. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, that empathy. Yeah, empathy you know, about how others feel. The right, narcissist right. typically does not. Oh no, they don't give a fuck. <laughs> they don't give a fuck. They, how you they, feel. they will fucking drain you to the last fucking Man, drop and enjoy it and enjoy it and fucking yeah. narcissists. I I remember back in uh, I think two thousand seven. What's been my worst financial year as an adult? I think it was 2017 since I've been 18 years old. Mm -hmm. In 2017, I I was just around um, narcissists. Mm -hmm. And I think I was getting getting hit from both ways, like two two different narcissists. And I went, I lost, damn near lost every fucking thing that I had Mm -hmm. to the point where I had to to sit down and write a letter. Mm Mm-hmm. To the universe, like how you got your notebook, like you had your no. I had a notebook pad, right? And I wrote a letter to the universe, and I took that motherfucker outside. That, that's that's said the story before. I don't know. Well, I took that notebook pad, and I, and I took I took the, I tore the tore the page out, mm-hmm. and I took it outside, and I dug a hole, and I put it in the hole, and I put the dirt on top of it, and I watered it like a plant. Mm-hmm. And a month later, something just sparked, mm-hmm. and brought me back. And everything that's been going great for me since that point in 2017 that brought me back, mm-hmm. it just kept going and going and going. And it's been a continuous situation once mm-hmm. I put that put that energy out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. you definitely got to be um, conscious of narcissists because even if you're in a relationship, uh, relationship with them, you, being in a relationship, energy is transferable. So you pick up traits for sure from those people, mm-hmm. and then you carry those traits on to the next situation. Mm-hmm. So baggage, baggage. Mm-hmm. So you, you can definitely fall in that category if you don't check it or know what's going on. You know what I mean? A person could. You know what I mean? All so right. you definitely got to pay attention. All right. Yeah. So we got some points here. With these relationship falls, fallouts. So how do you feel about... Um, somebody made a post and they said, you can't threaten women telling them they're going to... Uh, you can't threaten women telling them they're they going to be old and alone no more. Right. Uh, they don't even care. How do you... Th- what do you think about that? Like women basically like not caring about 
basically what the future holds for them, I Pe- guess, is pertaining <sighs> to relationships. People who say that they don't care, they really care. Okay. So that's the first thing about it, right? But it's not, okay, so in this situation, it's not like the woman saying that she doesn't care. It's like somebody basically saying that when they're, so there are men, I'm going to just say, I'm going to just put this out here because this shit kind of bothers me. I'm trying to find the post. Right. There are men that will try to threaten a woman into dating them. Basically, like, I mean, you ain't no spring chicken. Like, they'll oh. just say little <laughs> right, things right, right, to right. you to kind of let you know, like, you should be kind of happy they trying to talk to you because, right. like, you know, you're of this age or, you know, what whatever little thing that they think that they can use to kind of manipulate you right. into right. feeling desperate enough to deal with they punk ass. Yeah. Um, there are men who actually do that um to to women and so what this person was basically saying was like um <laughs> hold on I, I get where you're going with it though I, telling women they're going to be single for life or won't have a family just doesn't hit like it used to these women don't care that's what the post was i mean it goes back to the whole thing i was saying about the the illusion of time right yeah. and the expectation mm-hmm. now i get what they're trying to say once you get to a um, maybe we as you get older in life, mm-hmm. you, your you you can't expect um, certain things. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is, you you're not gonna have the man with a um, million dollars, six pack, um, everything going for itself, and say, "Oh, I'm gonna be um, sixty years old, and he's gonna pick me." Right? You know, it's not. It, it's just. It's just not. Yeah. It's not typical. Typically, gonna happen like that. Right. So, when it goes to that type of situation, um, I think the women just got to be more realistic mm-hmm. in their expectations. Mm-hmm. So, it's okay to date a man that's on the same level as you, mm-hmm. and treat that man just as powerful as if he was mm-hmm. that uh, t- had ten million dollars. You right. know what I mean? And once once women understand that. I think it everything would be okay. Mm-hmm. And I think women do understand that once they get older. That's the thing. That's the thing that's so crazy because that there's that saying youth is wasted on the young. Right. Right, cuz you know everything when you're older, but you think you know everything when you're younger. Yeah. And so when you when you at the when you're at your best stage, you know, the best time to get married, the best time to have children, the best time for everything, you usually your head's so far in the clouds that you don't really know. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? And then when you get to be in your late 30s and 40s, right. now you have all the sense, but the options have diminished greatly. The option, you lose the option. But, <laughs> so, the, but when you're younger, it goes to that, yeah. that saying that you were saying earlier. Yeah. You have a three-bedroom house. You need a six-bedroom house. Right. And, and you think that you can just, you know, you always think that you just go live forever and you can mm-hmm. just do whatever you want. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the youth, I mean, I remember when I was younger, um, a lot of things I used to tell people mm-hmm. and they never listened to me, right? Yeah. And they were just like, oh, this motherfucker asshole, he's, he's, he's mean. You know, no, I'm just telling y'all, something was telling me to say it. Mm-hmm. Nobody listened. Then fast forward 10 years later, they say, oh, you was right about that. Mm-hmm. You was right about this. And it's like mm-hmm. you're telling me I'm right now doesn't. I mean, it, it kind of it gives me a little boost to my ego. Like, yeah, nigga, I know because this I was feeling back then. I know I was right. But did, did I do anything because you didn't listen in, mm. you know, and then did it actually hurt me in the process? Because being around people who wasn't listening and damn. Mm-hmm. Everybody else is just down here, and it's uh, not down here. But um, what I mean is, like, their thinking wasn't f- more forward. Mm-hmm. Like, like when I first was brought my house, I was like, I was telling people, like, "Hey, man, come on, we all got these credit score jobs. We make this money. Mm-hmm. Everybody buy a house, right? Nobody listened. Like, nobody wanted to buy a house. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to today, a lot of people don't even have a place to stay for real." Mm-hmm. They have to move in with a with a with a with a, with a woman <laughs> and pretend to be good guys, you know what I'm saying? To just to have shelter, you see what I mean? Yeah. Where they could have actually brought a house back then, had equity, and and if they came up on a hard time, they could have sold their house and had money in their pocket. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's just a thing. The ego that you have mm-hmm. when you're younger and the kids being a, being a being a kid, you know, just. You don't want you don't want to listen because you think you got it figured out. Mm-hmm. 
So that's why it's important to be able to listen to um, podcasts like these <laughs> that talk about talk about substance. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to pick up on the game. Yeah. When we're younger, we think that we're always supposed to do differently than what people did before us. Right. Like that's our kind of that's kind of our goal. And that's not it's not to say that's not a worthy goal, but then when we get older, we want the back the traditional stuff. We right. want the marriage our parents had and we want right. that family they had. You right. know what I mean? Like so at first we want to veer away from, but then we want to cling back to once we see like, oh, this shit we was talking about really wasn't it. Right. I think it's um we gotta have a healthy dose of uh foresight and hindsight okay you get what i'm saying yeah, like right. don't just look to the past of how it was wrong or to your present situation yeah. or, you, you know even with like with like parenting like a lot of times we fixate on giving our kids everything that we didn't have right or we we don't want to do things to our kids that we felt like our parents did that weren't good. And then we get older and we think, oh, I should have did that. I, yeah. I probably should have, you know, been sh- more strict. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like you you let your kids hang out all night because you had a curfew at 7 o'clock. Right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. So now your kids, you know, they, wow. Okay. Yeah. And, and you that. weren't. Right. You know what I'm saying? So we have to have, you know, a good do- dose of foresight, like how I want things to be better, right. but also a good healthy dose of hindsight and not just negative. I think we kind of look back sometimes in a negative way when we're trying to, 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 to say what we're going to do. I'm not going to do this, right? but there were other things that were this, that were good. Don't yeah. leave that behind too. Like take that with you too. Yeah. I think we've been pro- so programmed with just negativity though. Yeah. So in our community, we mm-hmm. celebrate everything that's negative. A motherfucker go out and kill somebody. He's like, free this motherfucker. Free free Johnny. Free this person. You know what I mean? We look up to all the street niggas. You know what I mean? And don't get me wrong. I have no problem with street niggas like ever in life. You know what I mean? Because I know. Street niggas are affectionate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I had no problem with, with no type of street shit. Because, you know, I my, my father was an ultimate street nigga. Like, for real, for real. So it was like I grew up. Um, going up and down to the prisons, you know, prisons and visiting him my whole young life. And I rode around in the car with him while he was doing X, Y, and Z. And so I have no problem with that. But at the same time, it's still a negative, uh, it's, it's still a negative attribute to society based on where we live. Now, street niggas have a hell of a hustle and mentality mm-hmm. successful street niggas not the not the people just running around doing silly shit yeah. but they have a hell of a um mentality mm-hmm. so all you gotta do is is a, is an energy so you, all you gotta do is take that same energy that you apply mm-hmm. in that situation and move it to another situation and you can be as ruthless in business yes legit business as you do as a street person but we get so caught up being oh you know i got to be the uh the rapper i got to have all the chains right you know and, and not take attaining these things in the right way it's like uh malcolm x said west indian archie you know the numbers guy he used to run with that wanted to right, to right. kill him back in the day oh, he, right, right, he could have right. been a mathematician right right, you know right. he never forgot because a number he, right he never forgot a number right. he he knew all the numbers in his head mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying that's a special gift but when you are consumed in the hood or you know, an environment that doesn't uh, cater to that yeah. or help evolve that, yeah. then you become West Indian Archie when you could have been, you know, some great mathematician who yeah. solved, you know, yeah. ridiculous equations across the world. So, but that's just, that's just lack of information. Yeah. And then you then when, when we're presented to the, this is what we have to be to be successful, mm-hmm. then our women, you know what I'm saying, look – at us, it's like, okay, this is what it is. So then the women start attracting to that particular lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And now all the, the the younger people coming up, like, this is what I got to do to be able to get that woman. Exactly. You know what I mean? And to have these women to, and to be glorified. Mm-hmm. So it just, it just transfers over and the cycle repeats itself over and over until some new information comes about. That's when, when, I, when I first law, learned about the laws of attraction. Mm-hmm. You know, I started pressing and pushing it out or any information that I get, mm-hmm. I started talking about it. Mm-hmm. So, um, like when I talk to my son, you know, what I'm saying he's only 16. I talked to my son, mm-hmm. my oldest son, and he 
I would ask him questions and he would answer them exactly the way that I expect him to answer. And I said, well, how do you know that? And he say, I don't know. But I always subconsciously would tell, talk to him about this mm. stuff. So it's already kind of programmed in his in his mind. Right. To to be uh, get out there and be a hustler. But he didn't you know, come from the same environment that I came from right. growing up. So. You know, he's been more um, privileged in a sense. Mm -hmm. So he uh, he he don't he doesn't have to he doesn't know about that. Mm -hmm. So he he can take that same energy, though, Mm -hmm. and apply it to the things that he's into Mm -hmm. to push himself forward and push our DNA or, our you know, our, our culture within the family, push our family for for long after I'm gone. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. think that's super dope. So I was um, thinking um, of the next show. So, um, cause I want to do a show about how powerful black women are, right. but not the show about how powerful black women are that people expect. Okay. Or just women in general, right? right. About about feminism, about the our current state, um, shit that you know is is going on and. Somebody had made a statement that uh, marriage was going to become a relic because women don't want it and, you know, women right. don't need it and men don't want it. Right. Do you think that's true? I think that um, I think women definitely want to be married. They said women don't need it, though. Oh, they don't. Men yeah. don't want it. So women don't need it. Men don't want it. It's going to become a relic. Well, damn, dude. I never knew that men, well, damn, shit, everything is uh, flip-flopping nowadays. So I never I never um, thought that men needed to be married. But, um, but, but it's, right. it's women need, men want. So they're saying women don't need to right. be married and men don't want to be married. So that's going to make it fade away because there's it might, no it might It might fade away on that, on that, on that, mm-hmm. um, on that perspective, because if if women don't need to be married, that means they they're not going to settle for or or be submissive or right it, for anything that they don't want mm-hmm. at all. So mm-hmm. that that's definitely going to make the man say, "Well, fuck, I don't want to be in a situation yeah. because now we going back to that whole thing." What I always talk about masculine um, females being masculine, you know, certain females being masculine is yeah. if two masculine energies. It's combative. Mm-hmm. It's going to fight. So yeah. either if the women don't need to be married, that means they will be more independent. And then yes. especially with black women, I don't. I, I think black women has this title of being an independent black woman. I don't know if anybody else has that that title with with being independent. Like mm-hmm. I don't know about the other women, white independent uh, women. Mm-hmm. So when them so do, when those two masculine energies meet each other. Mm-hmm. They're gonna fight. They're not gonna come together unless the man become uh, soft. Mm. The man become feminine, mm. and the man. But the women ain't gonna want the men because they want their man to lead. Because because <laughs> because that's how everything has been structured. Right. But like I said before, th- that energy is gonna balance itself out some way. So if the women are making all the money, the women got the jobs, the women are in control of getting the money, mm-hmm. and, he, and these these dudes over here ain't making enough money, and they, they now they sitting at home and they washing the clothes, the roles is going to switch. So the men going to have to end up submitting if they going to have uh, make this shit work, or it's going to be a constant battle. Mm-hmm. So it just depends on the future, but that's why you got guys like Andrew Tate. He's he's banned off all platforms. Mm-hmm. You had Kevin Samuels. Mm-hmm. You, you got you got these guys that's pushing this masculinity mm-hmm. to make sure we keep some balance. Keep that balance the way that it's supposed to be. But how how does this world work? Or oh, this universe work? Right? Does it flip flop every other time? Exactly. Are we living in reality? Because in my reality. <laughs> No, I'm not. I'm not being feminine. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So then, this was my take on it because, from statistics research that I've seen, is there are currently a half a million more married black men than there are married black women. 
So black women are the least partnered demographic globally. Okay. So if we outnumber black men, but they're married more than us, doesn't that mean that they want marriage? They definitely want marriage. Right. So then to, the to, onus is on the women. To the women. But, but that's I'm, I'm believing that has to do with something because black women are the most educated women. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which means they can um, handle business, get get these jobs and yeah. take on tasks. Mm-hmm. One, one, one million percent. Yeah, you can't take that from us. Yeah, so we, we know that for sure. We can get to the bag. Get to the fucking bag. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And, you know, y- y- y'all watched y'all watch the, how the, everything play out. Y'all could just take in the information. Yeah. So that's why it's very important for the um, the black woman to um, seek information outside of just the the, the uh, whitewash information, mm-hmm. but just more natural information to to increase us and, and push us further. Mm-hmm. But um, back to what you were saying, if these women at these other places are submitting more. Mm hmm. Then that's why it's happening because yeah. it's it's a more just a more feminine woman. I think like eighty percent of black men still marry black women, but right. then there's that you know half a million that are married obviously to non-black women, right. but they're more married than we are. Is what I'm the point I'm trying to make is like right. we're at the bottom there, and so we can't really honestly make this assertion that men don't want marriage. Right. I think I think men want to be married. They just For want. Sure. They just want. A, a, a more peaceful situation. Yeah, they want to be married to somebody who wants to be a wife. Right, exactly. I agree with that. So a lot of people want a wedding and a, and the a title. Yeah, but they don't want to be a wife. Right, exactly. So that is what I want to talk about on the next episode. So okay. we're gonna have to bring uh, BK back because you see he's in the streets. <laughs> Oh he yeah, he didn't just re- he didn't rile people up so much. <laughs> I he love BK been man. there for two days. <laughs> hey, people be mad as a motherfucker, man. <laughs> but they go along with him because you know we are we kind of know that this is what he does now, right? So <laughs> but, I can, I can I can't get away with um what BK do. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean and and I can get away with a lot of shit, but BK yeah. he he can get away with. I mean, not get away with. He put his he put his um his stuff out there and he already know where he coming from, you know what I mean? What I love about him is he'll say the crazy shit and then somebody will go off on him and his response will be just laughing. <laughs> right, 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 like, right. Oh. Right. He's toxic. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> That's my dog, BK. This, this person just wrote a whole goddamn paragraph, and you done put some laughing emojis up <laughs> under here after you done told this woman she at the worst stage of her life to find a man ever. Right, right, right. At right. 35 plus. Right, right. Is it really 35 plus? Well, you got to think about it like this. Um, 35 is, is middle age. We, we're, not, we're not conditioned to think of that, but it's actually middle age because. For dating, I guess. No, not for dating, for life. For because life. Uh, based on our. Oh, yeah. Life expectancy. Life expectancy is really at 70 oh. and it's not 100. Mm-hmm. But we always think of life as 100%. Mm-hmm. So we think 50 is middle age. Mm-hmm. No, 35 is actually middle age. Jeez. Yeah, so we we just don't we don't, we won't get that concept because how many people are actually living to be a hundred years old? Right. We could live to be a hundred years old, but we don't have the um, right diets and, mm-hmm. and and the right food. Mm-hmm. And and no matter how healthy you try to be, you know what I mean. Uh, they're not the, the the food source is not available because we're not learning how to grow mm-hmm. our vegetables and our fruits, and we we're not farming anymore. So we got guys like Bill Gates. Even with the Beyond Meat, I believe he owns a large percent of the Beyond Meat. Oh, I'll never eat it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, that. right. No uh, thanks. But just, just quote, um, look that up. Probably a chip in there. Right, right. Look that up though. <laughs> just, just make sure I'm right about that. But then you know he brought all that farmland up. So, right. what is he? Do, what is he doing to the soil? He's trying to block out the sun. So, um, they're trying to shorten our life expectancy already, mm-hmm. and then they expect us to. Um, Work till we it used to be you get your um social security at what like 57, then it went to 59, then it went to 62. Hmm. I think it's at 67 right now. Wow, because they they know they, they they're, they're raising it up mm-hmm. because they don't expect you to you know you're not gonna live that long, right? Woo. Yeah, so I mean, it, it's, a, it's a hell of a thing of how this uh, world is um set up. And I was looking at something the other day, like 
No other species on this planet has to pay for anything except humans. But we're supposed to be the most intelligent species that's here. Right. And we're supposed to be under, um, we, we get caught up with saying God, as, call him a he, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And and we, he, we were made in the image of him, but we're the only people on this planet that has to pay for everything that we do or have or to eat to, for everything. Who came up with the whole thing that we have to pay to survive when you have other species, animals that can just go out and, and can just live. But hell, we ruining it for them. We destroying their habitats. Yeah, and I, I feel so sad when I see a deer right. on a road where it's just all these houses now where that used to be woods. Right, and you just right. think this poor deer is just like, my home is gone. Right, right. It's out of here. <laughs> it's gone. Right. And trying to adapt to... You know the new life. I think I think about shit like that. It right, is right, that right, right. to me. Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah, but it's eight billion of us in this motherfucker now. The right. population hit eight billion. Oh yeah, and, so, and we know they're trying to cut that by ninety percent. Ninety percent. Yeah, they want they want to cut the population by ninety percent. Oh hell yeah! No. I mean that's the same thing. Um, don't quote me on this. I'm uh -huh. you know, but that's the same thing. What happened with the um. With the native, the Native Americans, and mm. with, with the whole smallpox ep epidemic, when they gave them them blankets with the smallpox, it wiped out ninety percent of the people. Mm. You must look as worse than Thanos. All right, right, right. <laughs> and, that, it, and and even your boy Bill Gates, I've definitely watched um, different interviews. And he said we need to cut the population by about ninety percent. Oh, and then he's the head of the whole thing with the uh, the Rona situation, and Man. it's like. You just seen this man say this. Then they talked about a whole simulation. What would happen if a virus came through? And then three months later, a virus came through. Like, it's we, like we're living in a movie. It would definitely, Every day, I'm like, this is a simulation. This isn't real. It, you guys are projections of my subconscious. Yes. Uh, shit like that. Anyways. We are definitely before you before you go there. Okay. We're definitely living in a movie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's a movie script. The script has already been written and the people who control the world have all the resources mm -hmm. to be able to fulfill this movie. So anytime a, if, if they give you the script or the script sure, you know what I'm saying, or, 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 or reveal a or reveal something or a revelation, mm -hmm. they if if people start having a revelation, and see what's going on. We already gave you the script or the script shirt, so now we can create the movie mm. to make it seem like a power that's above us is causing all this chaos when it's actually the people that's running everything around. Yikes! That was deep as fuck. Oh, well, I'm, I'm trying to go there. I'm, Damn! I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to go get real deep. Damn. <laughs> China right now and it's like <laughs> anyways thank you so much for that I'm gonna be thinking about that all fucking day now they done laid out the plan now they just gotta fulfill it motherfuckers okay. oh yeah <laughs> it is that deep this was episode 17 hey we in the building hey, 17 in the building <laughs> alright y'all we'll see y'all next time we're gonna talk about these women we, we out peace peace peace, peace. <laughs>